Hey everybody, let's talk about significant figures here as part of the AP Physics Summer Review. I know most of you have had um, significant figures in chemistry and so this is just going to be a brief review to get you ready for class in September. The first thing I want to talk about is accuracy and a lot of people think that you know significant figures are here just to make your life miserable in science but that's not really true um, significant figures or significant digits really are all about measurement about the measurements that we take so it's important to take a minute to talk about uh, two values that you're probably already familiar with one is accuracy and one is precision so accuracy refers to how well a measurement agrees with an accepted value Precision, on the other hand, describes how well a measuring device can produce a measurement. So every measuring device has a limit on its precision, and that depends on how that device was designed, how that device was constructed. So a good general rule that we use to discuss the limit of precision on any given measuring device is if we find the smallest marking on that device, we say that the precision for that device, I'm sorry guys, would be one half of the smallest measurement on that device. So I'm going to give you an example of this um, in a moment, but this rule is going to be important for us throughout the year to think about, okay, what's the smallest marking on a specific device? And then we can report the precision of that device as one half the smallest marking. So an example of this is if we can imagine a meter stick where the smallest markings on the meter stick are given in tenths of a meter, like you see here, then I know that the smallest marking available is a tenth of a meter. So I know that the precision of this would be half of your smallest marking, which in this case half of the smallest marking is 0 0.05 meters and this would be the limit of precision we talk about certain and uncertain digits certain digits are anything that is identified on the measuring device Uncertain digits are estimated by the person using um, or using the measuring device. So the uncertain digit is the last digit that's written. When you read your measurements, it's important to include all of the certain digits available on the device and then one uncertain digit. If we're measuring the length of the green tape here in this example, we would want to include all of the certain digits and one uncertain digit. So a way to look at this would be when we go to the end of the green tape here, I'm just going to kind of make a line where this is. You know, where we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So we know for certain that this green tape is at least 0 0.6 meters. So I'm going to deal with my certain digits here. Okay, so 0 0.6 exists on this meter stick and I still need to include one uncertain digit so the uncertain digit is not a digit that appears on the device but it's something that's estimated by me so if I see 0.7 here I'm sorry 0.7 over here and I know that the green tape exceeds 0.6 I would say that this is definitely greater than where I would think halfway between the two markings is so the uncertain digit here, I think I would write 0.68. Maybe somebody else in my lab group takes a look at this and says, <clears throat> I don't know, I think this could be 0.67. Notice that the uncertain digit may vary uh, a bit from person to person. But the 0.6 here is a certain digit, so it's on the device itself. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised either if I had somebody say, oh, 0 0.69, 0 0.68, 0 0.67, those would all be um, accepted. 
When we talk about significant digits, sometimes they're called significant figures. Um, significant digits are the digits that are part of any valid measurement. So the number of significant digits depends on the number of divisions on the marking device um, that you're using. If it were a scale, we're not talking about number of divisions, but it would still depend on um, how precise that scale is. How would a person read the length of the red tape using each of these measuring devices below? So I think that we can agree that when we look at the first ruler versus the second ruler, the first ruler is definitely more precise. It has more divisions on it. And if we were to read this ruler, and again, I'm just going to kind of mark off where the tape ends. This is a little further than where the tape ends. Certain digits, when it comes to my first reading, would be 0 0.4. But I need to report this out to one uncertain digit, right? So I have my certain digits down, 0 0.4. And I would probably say this is about 0 0.43. Somebody else might come up and say, I don't know, it looks like 0 0.42. So again, this last digit is estimated. And this would be in meters. Now over here, <laughs> I'm certain that this would be right over around here would be around zero and over here would be around one. Um, so I have zero, but the last digit that I would estimate is going to be right here in the tenths place. Uh, this looks to me to be, I don't know, about 0.4 maybe. So you can kind of see the difference. If you were to read off of somebody's paper a measurement like this, you should be able to picture the ruler with which it was taken. So I can picture a ruler in which this last digit is not a marking on the ruler, but that the second to last digit here, this tenths place, is what, what's there. So I could picture a meter stick that has these tenth of a meter divisions. And over here, I know that the last digit is an uncertain digit, so I would be able to envision this ruler. I would be able to say, okay, this ruler doesn't even have um, markings that are in the tenths. So this ruler looks like zero, one meter, um, that kind of thing. In physics, we'll use significant digits often because we tend to do a lot of math operations with measurements. For example, one of the first things we'll do when we meet up in September is we'll talk about a quantity called velocity, which is displacement divided by time. And displacement is something that might be measured in uh, meters, and time would be measured using seconds. So we know that they're measured with two different measuring instruments, and we would need to be able to deal with significant digits in order to report our answer correctly. So a couple of things to get us started. Um, all non-zero numbers in a measurement are significant, and the zeros located between non-zero numbers are also significant. There's something called the Atlantic and Pacific Rule that you probably dealt with last year. It's just a way for people to remember how many significant digits a number has. So what people do is they'll kind of picture the map of the United States of America here. And if we picture it as we have in this picture here, to the right we have the Atlantic Ocean, it starts with the letter A, and to the left is the Pacific Ocean, starts with the letter P. If the decimal point in the, me in the given measurement is present, you can start counting the digits that you have starting at the Pacific side of the measurement. And if the decimal point is absent, then we're going to start counting from the Atlantic side. So let's go through a few examples to uh, make sure that this makes sense. Okay, so in this first example here, 2.5746 meters, here's my decimal point. So the decimal point is P present. So that means I'm going to start counting from the Pacific side. I count a non-zero number here of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this has five significant digits. In the next example, 48 centimeters, there is no decimal point. The decimal point is A absent. So I'm going to start counting from the Atlantic side. I have a non-zero number here and here. So I have two significant digits. Decimal point is P present. I'm going to start counting from the Pacific side. The first number I come across is a zero. 
So remember, it's all non-zero digits that are significant, and then any zeros that are kind of uh, come after uh, non-zeros would be significant. So in this case, this one is not a significant digit. This one is and so is this. So I end up here with two significant digits. For example, D, we have 500 miles. Decimal point is A, absent, so I'm going to start counting from the Atlantic side. I, and the first number I encounter is a zero. So this is not significant, not significant, yes, significant. So this one is one. Something that I want to discuss as we take a look at these examples is notice the 500 miles without the decimal point here that we just did. I like to point out to people that if you have the same measurement 500 with the decimal point present, we'd start counting from the Pacific side then. And this 5 would be significant and so is every number after it. So in this case these zeros are significant and the answer would be three significant digits. Okay, so we're going to start to talk about actually using significant digits in calculations. The example that I provided for you before in physics was the physical quantity of velocity. So when we meet up in September, one of the first quantities we'll deal with is called velocity and it's equal to the displacement divided by the time. Displacement will be measured in something like meters or miles, and the time could be in hours or seconds. So obviously those two quantities use different devices, and each of those devices that are used in the measurement may be of different precision. So when we report our answer, we have to make sure that it's reported in a way that doesn't imply to any reader that either measurement was made um, with a more precise device um, than it really was. When you use a calculator to do multiplication and division, most of the time your calculator is just going to give you an answer um, with many, many digits after it if it's uh, something that doesn't divide out evenly or something that doesn't multiply evenly. And so we need to kind of take it upon ourselves to take this responsibility to understand which measurements are going into the calculation and how it needs to, reported coming, to be reported coming out. Okay, so this is an example of kind of how things um, might go wrong if we don't pay attention to the measurements that were given. Um, two measurements in this example are, they look to be length and a width, maybe 2.3 meters and 7.45 meters. And if you were asked to find the area um, using these two measurements, let's say the area is length times width, so for your area you'd have 2.3 meters times 7.45 four or five meters. If we put this into the calculator, your calculator is going to spit out a number that looks like this, 17.135 uh, meters squared would be the units there. And this actually is not how your final answer should be reported. If it is, you're telling the reader that, that the area um, is comprised of measurements that were made with an instrument that has this uncertain digit in the thousandths place and the smallest marking on that um, device would be in the hundredth of a meter. And that's really not what happened when we look back at the original here. Um, 2.3, this guy here had two significant figures and this one had three significant figures. So your answer must be reported in the least amount of significant figures. So the answer here should really just be 17 meters squared. So in words, when we think about the rules for using significant figures in calculations, when you multiply or divide significant digits, your answer should contain as many significant digits as the least precise measurement. When we're adding and subtracting significant digits, the rule's a little bit different. When you're adding or subtracting significant digits, your answer should contain as many decimal places as the measurement with the smallest amount uh, of decimal places.